Um, good afternoon, distinguished members of the press, ladies <coughs> and gentlemen. Um, the Monetary Policy Committee meeting met on the 21st, that is today, in an environment of heightened geopolitical tensions and persisting macroeconomic uncertainties associated with the recent Russia-Ukraine crisis and headwinds stemming from the lingering impact of COVID-19 pandemic. The committee reviewed developments in the global and domestic environments in the first quarter of 2022 and the outlook for the rest of the year. External financial conditions associated with monetary policy normalization in the advanced economies, the cocktail of sanctions imposed on Russia, the global supply chain disruptions associated with the invasion of Ukraine, and increasing vulner vulnerabilities associated with the burgeoning global private and public debt portfolio and risks to financial stability. Others include, others include increased uncertainties across major financial markets and the increased risk of continuing rise in prices confronting central banks due to the huge monetary and fiscal stimulus injected into the global economy to subdue these downside risks to growth. Ten members of the committee attended this meeting. The global development. The committee noted with concern the recent heightening of uncertainties confronting the recovery of the global economy as the Russia-Ukraine conflict and numerous sanctions against Russia introduced a new dimension to risk to the, to the tepid recovery of the global economy. It further took into cognizance the lingering headwinds associated with COVID-19 pandemic and global supply chain constraints rising inflationary pressure, and more recently, the progression of interest rates hike by the US Fed and the Bank of England. Members noted that the ongoing war and the resultant sanctions against Russia will continue to have a considerable impact on the global economy, global supply chain, as both countries are major players in the global commodities market. With both countries significantly interconnected to the global financial markets, global capital, capital flows are expected to experience some downturn exacerbated by the increasing sanctions on Russia. Consequently, the earlier projections by the International Monetary Fund for global output growth in 2022 and 2023 <coughs> of 4.4 and 3.8% respectively are likely to be revised downwards due to the overarching downside risk identified on the horizon. Price developments across major advanced economies continue to trend down upwards and is expected to be accentuated in the short to medium term, reflecting the persisting supply bottlenecks, rising food and energy prices, and the ongoing war which heightened the observed trend. In the emerging market and developing economies, Inflation remained high, with some economies recording inflation rates well above the average in the advanced economies. This was mostly due to a mix of downside risks from the COVID-19 pandemic, capital flow reversals, legacy structural challenges, supply side bottlenecks, and exchange rate, exchange rate market pressures. In the global financial markets, investors maintained a substantial portion of their portfolios in gold, and other precious metals as the uncertainty around market securities persists alongside the pandemic and the emergence of new risks following the imposition of sanctions on Russia. It is still unclear at the moment how the progression with monetary policy normalization by some key advanced economies will impact the recovery of the global economy given the risks associated with this crisis. Investors are, however, adopting a cautious approach in view of the considerable impact of these developments on activities in the global markets. Global financial conditions are thus expected to tighten in the short term as the investment horizon gradually becomes clearer. This is expected to impact 
global impact capital flows to emerging market economies as risk averse portfolio investors adopt a wait and see approach. Consequently, the risks to the overall economy, recovery of the global economy remain heightened and call for cautious policy maneuvering to avoid a sharp downturn such as experienced in 2020. Domestic development. According to Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, NBS, real GDP grew by 3.98% year on year during the fourth quarter of 2021, compared with 4.03% during the third quarter of 2021, and 0.11% in the corresponding period of 2020. On a quarter on quarter basis, it grew by 9.63% during the fourth quarter of 2021 compared with 11.07% during its preceding quarter. This indicates the fifth consecutive quarter of real output expansion following the exit from recession in 2020. The positive performance was driven lightly by the growth in the non-oil sector to 12.36% during the third quarter of 2021 from 10.99% during the third quarter of 2021. Querying, transportation and storage, edu storage, education, financial and insurance services, information and communication, as well as steady rebound in manufacturing and mining activities were key to the growth of the non-oil sector. The committee, however, noted that although the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index remained above the 50 index points benchmark in February 2022, it moderated slightly to 50.01 index points from 51.4 index points in January 2022. This sustained positive performance in the manufacturing PMI reflects the resilience of the economy in light of persistent headwinds to the recovery. The non-manufacturing PMI, however, remained below the 50 index points in February 2022 at 49.0 index points while a slight moderation compared with 41.01 points in January 2022 as legacy headwinds such as the persistent insecurity and infrastructural constraints continue to impact production and the ease of doing business in Nigeria. The committee observed with concern the marginal increase in headline inflation year on year to 15.70% in February 2022 from 15.60% in January 2022, a 0.1 percentage point uptick. This increase was largely attributed to a rise in the core component to 14.01% in February 2022, from 13.87% in January 2022, while food prices moderated marginally. The rise in core inflation was mostly due to rising energy prices as a result of the current scarcity of petroleum premium motor spirit PMS, rise in the cost of automotive gas oil AGO, and hike in electricity tariff. Committee, however, expressed cautious optimism that with sustained interventions by the bank in various sectors of the economy and broad fiscal support to tame these legacy structural constraints, price developments will moderate as output growth improves. MPC therefore urged the finance fiscal authorities to seek innovative ways of addressing the current critical supply side challenges confronting the economy to enable the unhindered transmission of all the recently deployed fiscal and monetary stimulus to the real economy for good. Members noted the growth rate of broad money supply M3 increased to 2.12% in February 2022, compared with 1.74 in January 2022. This was largely attributed to an increase in the growth rate of net domestic assets, the NDA, to 5.78% in February 2022, from 2.62% during the previous month. On the developments in the money market, Committee observed the movement in money market rates around the asymmetric corridor, reflecting the prevailing liquidity conditions in the banking system. Accordingly, the monthly weighted average open buyback rate 
decreased to 5.81 and 9.3 percent in February 2022 from 6 percent and 16 percent in January 2022 respectively. The decrease in the OBB and interbank call rates reflected the liquidity conditions in the banking system. MPC noted the sustained improvement in the equities market in the review period. The all share index and market capitalization both increased significantly from 42,716.44 and 22.3 trillion naira on December 31, 2021 to 47,282.67 and 25.48 trillion naira on March 18, 2022, respectively. This prevailing positive performance was attributed to gradually improving macroeconomic fundamentals which support improved outcomes and returns on investment from companies quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange Limited. MPC also noted the continued resilience of the banking system evidenced by the further moderation of the ratio of non-performing loans, NPL, to 4.84% in February 2022 from 4.9% in December 2021. The committee also noted that liquidity ratio remained above its prudential limit at 43.5% in February 2022, while capital adequacy ratio moderated slightly to 14.4% in February 2022 from 14.5% in December 2021. Overall, members expressed confidence in the bank's regulatory regime and commitments to maintaining stability in the banking system, urging the management to sustain its tight regulatory surveillance on the system. On the external reserve position, committee noted the decrease in the level of gross external reserves to 39.4 4 billion dollars as at March 2017, 2022, from 40.21 billion dollars as at January 25, 2022, indicating a decrease of 1.95 percent over the review period. The moderate, the moderate accretion to reserves reflects the duality of Nigeria's position as an oil exporter and importer of refined petroleum products. Committee reviewed the performance of the bank's various interventions to stimulate productivity in the manufacturing, industry, agriculture, energy, infrastructure, health, micro, small and medium enterprise sectors. Between January and February 2022, the bank disbursed 29.67 billion under the Anchor Boras program for the procurement of input and cultivation of maize, rice and wheat, three crops that hitherto were significant, were significant concerns of FX demand. These disbursements bring the total under the program to over 4.5 million smallholder farmers cultivating 21 commodities across the country comes to a total of 975.61 billion naira. The Nigerian Commodity Exchange NCX has also been restructured to effectively aggre aggregate excess output from the bank's and corporate program finance projects with the objective of moderating food prices. The bank also released 19.1 billion to finance five large-scale agricultural projects under a commercial agricultural credit scheme, CACS, bringing the total disbursement under the scheme to 735.17 billion naira for 671 projects in agro-production and agro-processing projects. In addition to this, the bank disbursed the sum of 428.3 billion under the 1 trillion naira real sector support facility to 37 additional projects in the manufacturing, agriculture, and service sectors. The funds sourced from the real sector support facility, differentiated cash reserve requirement, were utilized for both greenfield and brownfield projects under the COVID-19 intervention for the manufacturing sector. Cumulative disbursements under the real sector facility currently stands at 1.75 trillion naira, disbursed to 368 projects across the country. Whereas under the 100 for 100 policy on production and productivity, the bank has disbursed a total of 29.5 billion to 31 projects, comprising 16 in manufacturing, 13 in agriculture, and two in healthcare. 
As part of its efforts to support the resilience of the healthcare sector, the bank also disbursed 8.5 billion to six healthcare projects under the Healthcare Sector Intervention Facility, bringing the community disbursement to this sector to 116.72 billion naira for 124 projects comprising 31 pharmaceuticals, 56 hospitals, and 37 other services. An additional tranche of 14.7 million was disbursed to five researchers under the Healthcare Sector Research and Development Intervention Scheme. To support households and businesses affected by COVID-19 pandemic, the bank disbursed 21.66 billion to 19,605 beneficiaries comprising 12,044 households and 7,641 small businesses under the TCF within the period. Cumulative disbursement under the TCF currently stands at 390.45 billion to 797,000 351 beneficiaries comprising 660,096 households and 137,255 small businesses. The bank disbursed 11.11 billion to power sector players under the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading Payment Assurance Facility PAF, bringing the cumulative disbursement under this facility to 1.28 trillion naira. The sum of 12.64 billion was also released to discourse under the Nigerian Electricity Market Stabilization Facility Phase 2, NEMS 2. Cumulative disbursement under NEMS 2 thus stands at 232.93 billion naira. Both interventions were designed to improve access to capital and ease the development of enabling infrastructure in the Nigerian electricity supply chain sector. Our outlook. The overall medium-term outlook for the global economy remains uncertain as the war between Russia and Ukraine persists alongside the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The sanctions against Russia are expected to have a considerable backlash against the global economy as Russia is an interconnected economy both in the global commodity and financial markets. The extent of the backlash has, however, not fully crystallized, but presents a significant downside risk to the recovery of the global economy if the crisis is not resolved immediately. Additionally, COVID-19 pandemic remains a significant downside risk to global recovery as the virus continues to mutate into highly infectious strains. This is impacting a high level of uncertainty on economic agents, thus creating inhibitions towards making the required investments to set the recovery on a sustainable path. As part of the lifting of restrictions associated with COVID-19 pandemic, the strong recovery of aggregate demand has continued to pose a strong upside risk to inflation as supply bottlenecks persist. This has been further aggravated by sanctions imposed on trade with Russia and other blockages associated with supplies from Ukraine. Consequently, inflation is expected to remain considerably high in the short term, even as some advanced economies progress with interest rate liftoff. The rise in both corporate and public debt in the advanced economies and emerging market and developing economies is also a major threat to global financial stability as the risk of sustainability is heightened in the currently tense global environment. Capital flows are thus expected to be restricted as global financial conditions tighten over the short to medium term. In the domestic economy, available data on key macroeconomic indicators suggest the likelihood of subdued output growth for the Nigerian economy for most of 2022. This is hinged on the dampening impact to growth of rising energy prices in the domestic economy, tightening external financial conditions as some advanced economies pursue interest rate lift off, as well as the persistence of legacy security and infrastructural problems. It is therefore, it is however expected that monetary and fiscal stimulus will remain in place 
to continue to support the recovery until downside risk to growth and the upside risk to inflation dissipate substantially. Accordingly, the Nigerian economy is forecast to grow in 2022 by 3.24% CBN estimate, 4.2% federal government estimate, and 2.7% IMF estimate. <clears throat> the committee's consideration. The Monetary Policy Committee noted with concern the impact which the global price increase in petroleum and other products is having practically on all economies. Committee further noted that this has resulted in imported inflation on the Nigerian economy and believes that specific actions need to be taken to ensure that this trend does not continue given the adverse consequences an aggressive rising price level could have on cost of living and purchasing power of Nigerians. Before the Russian-Ukraine war, MPC was optimistic that the moderate decline in inflation was sustainable due to the positive impact of good harvest on price levels. The MPC worries today that whereas global prices have gone up, this has been compounded by shortage of supply of petroleum products. In the short run, MPC urges NNPC to take urgent steps to ensure adequate supply of petroleum products in Nigeria so as to reduce the rate of arbitrary increase in price of these petroleum products by oil marketers. The committee noted with grave concern the unprecedented rate of oil theft recorded in recent times and its debilitating impact on government revenue and accretion to reserves. In the medium term, MPC is hopeful that the proposed takeoff of the Dangote refinery in the course of the year would help to improve the supply of petroleum products in Nigeria. MPC also notes that the rising price of diesel is compounded by the problem of inadequate electricity supply in Nigeria, which has adversely impacted domestic prices. MPC advises the CBN management and the fiscal authorities to take specific and urgent action to avoid many power generating stations shutdown for turnaround maintenance, resulting in the current unwarranted shutdown of our generating assets. MPC is relieved that food inflation declined marginally due to good harvest. Although some scarcity is expected as we approach the planting season, the committee is optimistic that with a high level of strategic green reserves of the CBN, it is relieved that food prices will remain relatively moderated. MPC further advised management to redouble its development finance initiatives aimed at boosting domestic food output, which would help in moderating food inflation going forward. And by extension, headline inflation could get moderated. In its consideration, as to whether to hold, tighten, or loosen, MPC remained concerned that the global situation on rising prices may continue in the near term, but may begin to moderate if deliberate and urgent actions are taken by both monetary and fiscal authorities to correct the rising inflation. On another hand, the committee was satisfied that the use of the bank's discretionary CRR policy should be deployed more aggressively to control the level of money supply in the economy. In addressing the issues whether to tighten in order to rein in the, ri the rising price level, MPC was of the view that given the fragile state of the current GDP growth and the potential external and domestic headwinds from Russia and Ukraine war, a contractionary policy stance will stifle the expected investment expansion needed to drive growth and absorb the shock in Nigeria. MPC also feels that not only will tightening reverse the steady improvement recorded in credit expansion, it is also of the view that tightening 
would not necessarily tame the inflation, particularly where the marginal decline in relatively is relatively not yet sustainable. In the case of whether to loosen, the committee feels that loosening will trigger further liquidity surfeit and fuel inflationary pressure as available funds outstrip the economy's absorptive capacity or domestic capacity utilization. MPC also feels that loosening will trigger FX demand pressure as the excess liquidity would exert demand pressure on the FX market and trigger a naira depreciation which would also fuel inflation. Based on the foregoing, the committee decided, on, decided to adopt a hold stance as it would indicate a precautionary and consistent policy stance with the prevailing economic conditions particularly as further economic and financial shock are exerted from the ongoing Russian-Ukraine war. Committee's decision. While growth has continued to improve, members noted that inflation was confronted with the upward pressure due to emerging risks within a domestic and external environment. MPC, however, noted that the substantial upward push to price levels continue to be influenced by supply-side factors such as scarcity of PMS, persistent insecurity, backlash from the Russian-Ukraine war, and a host of other issues. These require a careful and focused policy intervention to address and resolve. In this light, the MPC urged the bank to continue using the tools at its disposal while increasing its collaboration with the fiscal authorities to ensure that inflation is adequately reined in and growth is returned to a strong and sustainable path. The committee also encouraged the bank to continue the use of its intervention mechanisms to deploy funds to the output stimulating and employment generating sectors of our economy. Members were of the view that tightening the stance of policy to rein inflation could adversely impact the fragile recovery of output growth and may stifle the expected investment expansion. On the strength of the above considerations, three members voted to raise NPR by 25 basis points, one member voted to raise NPR by 50 basis points, while six members voted to hold all parameters constant. Those who voted to raise rates, though few, feel that feel the need to signal further tightened stance to rein in inflation. The committee thus decided by a majority vote to, re to retain the M MPR at 11.5%. In summary, MPC voted one, to retain MPR at 11.5%, two, retain the asymmetry corridor of plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the MPR, and three, retain CRR at 27.5%, and four, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. Thank you for your gracious attention. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, communique number 141 of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Central Bank of Nigeria held today, January 21, 2022. Thank you, Governor. Uh, March 2022. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, we'll take some questions. Your name uh, and your media and your question. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Governor and the members of the NPC. My concern actually is still on the Russia Ukrainian crisis. Uh, this has led to a bit of a spike in inflation across the globe. I want to know what NPC will do in specifics to help the Nigerian situation because fuel, I mean, petrol and diesel is rising and uh, it has a very, very significant effect on the other parts of uh, the economy. Thank you. What price do you represent? Oh, this one, please. This one. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Governor and other members of the committee. My name is Sunday Michael Ogu, and I write for Daily Trust newspaper. I have two questions. Um, in your address, you said uh, the MPC recommended uh, that the central bank seek innovative, sorry, the fiscal authorities seek innovative ways of addressing the supply side challenges with fuel, um, supply which has exacerbated our 
discretion position. I was wondering if uh, the committee has specific recommendations of what you think can be done uh, to rein in what we currently experience. Uh, my second question has to do with uh, the just concluded IMF uh, Article 4 consultation report, which uh, urged the central bank to scale back on its credit intervention as they are likely to cause market distortions in the long run. And listening to you today, uh, we are hearing the MPC ask uh, the development finance to redouble its intervention. Uh, and you said uh, monetary and fiscal stimulus will continue to remain in place until downside risks go down. So what, yes. what exactly <laughs> your response to the IMF? Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. I won't fight IMF, don't worry. <laughs> I can't even fight them, yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Governor. Another member of the MPC, I am Nancy Naji, the executive producer of the Land and the NEIC. I have two questions. The first question is uh, on Infraco. I remember I asked that question in November of 2021, and um, you gave a response. I would like to know the status of Infraco, the 15 trillion naira. Whatever the status on, on, on the infraco. The second question is uh, the press release last week on bank neutral cash homes. What does it mean, really? And um, what does the bank hope to achieve with that? Those are my two questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, Governor. My name is Leah Katun Babatunde, and I report for the Nigerian Corruption Authority. I have uh, concerns arising from the power sector, and of course the unavoidable electricity that we've been battling in the country. You made mention of uh, some monies running into trillions that have been injected by the central bank into that sector on various interventions. What can we possibly do to improve the level of power generation and distribution in the country since you've done this much. And also we hear that the president will be visiting Ngote petrochemical plant in Lagos tomorrow and then inaugurate maize pyramids in no, Kaduna on Thursday. So what no, role is the CBN playing in all this? Thank you. Okay, um, I have two questions uh, from Lagos. One is uh, from colleagues Wednesday of the nation newspapers. Governor Sir, what is the status of the Naira for dollar scheme of the bank? And how is the 100 for 100 policy on production and productivity uh, coming up? And the, I think the final one is from Baba Jide uh, Komolase from the Vanguard newspapers. In your briefing at the last MPC meeting in January 2022, you expressed optimism that with the bank sustaining its intervention programs through the year, food inflation is expected to trend downwards in 2022. With insecurity still a challenge, is the CBN optimistic that the prices of food will trend downwards in 2022? Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Well, well, thank you very much. Um, the first question is, is borders on the impact which the Russian-Ukraine um, uh, crisis is having on the global economy. And you're asking how will the MPC or CBN be helping Nigeria respond to this crisis. Um, in my response, uh, in when I was reading the um, communique, I, I, I retreated some factors responsible for um, the prices, of course, aside from the uh, Russia-Ukrainian, or the Russia-Ukraine war has resulted in a situation where crude prices, crude price has increased due to supply shortage. Um, and of course, for Nigeria, like you know, aside from this issue of crude price uh, rising, Nigeria has not been able to meet its export um, quota primarily because of um, unwarranted oil theft that we see um, today in our environment. And this um, obviously has resulted in the increase in the price of diesel and petrol all over the world. Just yesterday, in fact for the first time, on CNN, I watched 
where um, they said tanker drivers are also uh, refusing to drive or because there is no fuel diesel or because diesel prices have also gone up and all that. Or cases where because of the Russia and Ukrainian crisis, what we have seen is that because between Russia and Ukraine, for instance, on wheat and even some elements in maize, they supply close to almost about 35% of the global, global uh, volume available for, for these grains. And because of the war, there has been supply shortages that has also resulted in the rising price of not just petroleum products, but also on um, food prices or the prices of these grains. Um, the increase is so astronomical that it is currently creating a lot of problems globally and ultimately the global inflationary pressures that we see today. But what are we doing? Like we said again in the communique, we are concerned that, MPC was concerned, that the inflation that we are seeing from the core side came primarily because of supply shortage. Because if you check primarily whether in Abuja, in Lagos, or most of the centers, there still remains fuel queue everywhere. So what you, what you find is that because there is this fuel queue, arising largely from supply shortages, there is arbitrary increase in prices by retail marketers because they are not sure whether they will get more diesel after they've sold their stock. In fact, they are pricing what they are holding based on their expectation of their replacement price. So I don't know, somebody was saying yesterday whether I was at a session that even the price of diesel had risen to almost about 700 or even 800 naira per liter. So what are we therefore saying? We will try as much as possible, and we were told at this meeting today by the representative of finance, the PAMSEC finance, that the Minister of Finance and then NPC are holding engagements to see to what can be done to um, make sure that adequate funding is provided so that petroleum products is made available, so that they can be imported, and then all our filling stations can have these products. We are also saying we'll be engaging in NPC as well. If there's any kind of intervention that we can provide to help it make it easy for them to bring in these products so that we can, so that this um, shortage can, 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 can stop, then we will see that when supply increases and people are relatively confident that when they sell they are, whatever they are holding in petrol or diesel, diesel stock, that they can easily go and replace them, then the arbitrary price increases will reduce. When arbitrary price reduces, of course, we can begin to see that there will be gradual moderation in the price of this product, which would ultimately result in the moderation in the prices of other products that would have, whose prices would have gone up as a result of the arbitrary increase in the price of these items. That this is simple, simply how we think we can work with the CBN. Secondly, MPC also noted that because of the turnaround maintenance of most of the, or some of the uh, generating uh, stations, right, power generating stations, that they had to shut down. Shutting down has resulted in what I read again from uh, some circulars from some of the discourse that there was a shutdown, a collapse of the, of the grid. Whereas that was the case, but it's just shortage because um, the, all the generating companies are not, they're shut down, and because they're shut down, there is blackout, and when there's blackout, what you find is a lot of people go to buy diesel, and also the demand pressure, fruits pressure on prices, and then this, this is like a, con a, a continuum. So what we're trying to say here is that the CBN has always been um, there to support, um, to support the power sector. Like you all know, we've disbursed over 1.3 trillion naira in the last five years to support both the generators or discos, 
or to to acquire equipment or to buy meters or to even uh, improve what is being paid to electricity generating companies so that they can continue to, 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 to pay for their gas and then the system can continue to operate. We will be engaging also with the power minister and MBET and NEC to see whatever we can do to support them. And of course, we will also, thirdly, to ensure that we're able to continue to moderate food prices because what we find is that there are some external exogenous factors that are outside our control are coming from the impact of the Russian-Ukraine crisis. But if, for instance, that has resulted in uh, pressure on core side of the inflation, so what we're saying is that on food, where we're seeing some moderation, that our development finance department should see what can be done to continue to aggressively make sure that we make, we improve on our anchor program, program, improve on other, our, uh, all, our, all, all other programs that we have that is meant to boost agricultural output. If agricultural output in our various products are improved, what you will find is that we, may, we will see a further moderation in food inflation, which may help to dampen the effect of the rising core, thereby moderating effectively at the headline inflation. So those are some of the things um, we'll be doing. And I believe that um, if these actions are taken, if these actions are taken, we are reasonably pos po uh, positive that inflation will come down. So that's the reason we said we must take deliberate and specific and urgent action to address the factors that were responsible or that have been responsible for the uptick in inflation and prices. And that we believe that if addressed, we will be able to see, um, to see a solution to the rising prices in the country. So the second question is all related to the first one, what do I do with NNPC and also prices? So I would go further to the third one. <clears throat> the third one queried us that IMF um, Article 4 report advised that the CBN needs to scale down. And you know, the truth is that International Monetary Fund, I have to admit, has been a great supporter as well as advisor to the Central Bank of Nigeria and to Nigeria. Because it's important that we underscore the support that we have always received from the IMF. And now we can, I will highlight two. In 2020, as a result of COVID, the IMF opened its vaults to all countries, particularly the emerging markets, for us to draw on the uh, RFI facility loan. Nigeria got the highest in Africa of almost $3.4 billion. It has helped us, aided us in you know, resolving some of our problems, particularly during the period of COVID. In 2021, again, when they also saw, is it the second or third wave? IMF came up again and said, look, they were making, they were going to increase the special drawing rights, the SDR, and we also benefited to the tune of even above $3 billion. So have they been very helpful? I'd like to underscore it that they have been extremely helpful to the countries that are, that are, that are working with them. Um, I guess when you appreciate somebody for a good job, hopefully they will do more, even in 2022, and 2023, because no doubt they, I, I have read that even central bank central bankers are already thinking, talking that look, this Ukraine price, uh, Russia Ukraine prices, how how is it how it is affecting them, and how they will need some kind of support and bridging support to be able to overcome some of the challenges. However, in terms of advice, I think it's important that we reiterate the fact that the central bank of Nigeria remains a development finance oriented central bank. And it is normal, it is very, very normal for, in the, for an emerging market or developing economy to deploy the development finance tools through interventions to support the growth of the economy. Let's not forget, let's not forget, about two years ago, monetary policy said 
that our new thrust will be price stability, price and monetary stability that is conducive to growth. If we are to adopt price and monetary stability that is conducive to growth, in an environment where there is a tight fiscal space, where revenue shortfalls abound, and even government has to borrow, then I, I think it is just reasonable that central banks should step in to support the fiscal, to fill that space, not through grants, but through loans to our smallholder farmers, through loans to our small and medium enterprise businesses, through loans to our households, through loans to re, is it to, 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 to wake up our manufacturing industries that are dead. And I can say that in the last two and a half years, we've done almost, more, certainly more than three trillion naira. Whether we like it or not, and, I, and IMF themselves agree, that for instance, the amount over 300 billion that we've disbursed to almost one million households helped to catalyze consumption expenditure that has helped Nigeria to, to turn positive in its GDP, even though GDP is still fragile and we still face, face vulnerabilities. IMF knows that even our intervention to the manufacturing sector is helping, and we have facts to show so. Aside from macro rural program in agriculture, we've seen, was it last month, we went to Sokoto to, to launch a three million tons cement factory to increase manufacturing output in cement. Tomorrow, Mr. President, we'll be going to Lagos to commission a $2.5 billion fertilizer plant. What will that do for us? The 2.5 billion naira fertilizer plant will result in additional 3 million tons of urea in the country. Indorama produces 3 million metric tons. Uh, Notore produces 500,000. That is 6.5 million metric tons per annum. Our annual consumption is 1 million. What does that mean? They will export. We will end FX that will create liquidity in our IRA window and, and, and lead to less reliance on central bank for foreign exchange. So I, I think IMF themselves know this. They know that what we're doing, these interventions, 